Hello, welcome to this video. This is lesson 1A-1, and we're going to talk about the second half of the lesson, which is focused on concavity. Now, our uh, learning target for this lesson is to demonstrate an understanding of concavity, and you will know you are successful if you can do a couple of things. First of all, you need to be able to visually identify where a curve is concave up and concave down. We'll go ahead and talk about those two terms here in a moment. And you can use rate of change in order to determine concavity. Now we also want to be able to use concavity to determine whether a rate of change is increasing or decreasing. Okay, those are our learning targets and success criteria. Now, a couple of uh, concepts and terminology. First off is this idea of rate of change. This describes how two quantities change together. And an example of this would be James earns $17 for every hour he works, or James earns $17 per hour. The rate of change is for every hour worked, James earns 17. Now, when he gets a raise, that rate of change would be increasing because then he would earn, I don't know, let's say it was a 50 cent raise, 1750 per hour. Okay, let's go ahead and tie in this idea of concavity. Now, concave up. A function is said to be concave up if for equal intervals of the input. This is very, very uh, uh, important that your inputs or the slices of time that you're looking at have to be equal length uh, input values, the change in the output is increasing. So the change in the output is increasing. So that would produce concave up, that last um, situation that I gave you, okay? And then equivalently, if that rate of change is increasing, that also means that the graph is concave up, okay? So, um, uh, James earns $17 per hour, he gets a raise, now he's earning $17.50 every single hour, okay? What if James got fired? What if he was doing a bad job and then he had to go work at a different job and he was only getting $15 per hour? Well, that would result in a concave down situation. For equal intervals of input, the change in the output is decreasing. It is decreasing. So this is said to be concave down. And equivalently, if a rate of change is decreasing, how much he's earning every single uh, hour starts to decrease, that would imply that the graph was going to be concave down, okay? And we have a, a couple of examples here. So this instance here, this is concave up, and over here, this instance is concave down. Now, there's very, very simple and straightforward ways to identify concave up too. Uh, concave up, concave up, and I'm going to make that U very, very big, um, is if the graph is opening upwards. Kind of think like a smiley face. Concave up, everything is happy. Okay, whereas concave down, and I'll put this in red, concave down, the graph is opening downwards. This is a sad face. Okay. All right. So, a couple of examples. Go ahead and label where each curve is concave up, concave down, and the points where the concavity changes. And we call these point of inflection. Point of inflection, very important, where concavity changes. That is point of inflection. Please underline or highlight that information. Okay? All right, so we have a couple of examples here. So, our first example... Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, point here. This is concave down for this for that section, okay, where it is opening downward. And I'll go ahead and highlight here. This is concave down, All right, right about there, let's say. All right, and then this section, this is concave up because the graph is opening upwards, okay? And tying this back to rate of, rate of change, notice that the rate of change, how much I grow from this point to this point, that was a big increase, right? That's a big rate of change, increase. 
but for the next equal input, right, for this next span of one unit, I did not grow as much. So my rate of change is decreasing. And then go ahead and look at the next interval. So from, from negative one to zero, my rate of change is almost flat. Okay, maybe, maybe still positive, but almost flat. That's decreasing. That rate of change is getting less and less and less. Okay, now over the next interval from zero to one, well, I have a negative slope. Slope is decreasing. That's fine. You can still have rate of change uh, that's, that's negative, but again, I'm, now I'm not growing in the average rate of change. I'm actually uh, becoming negative. And then for the next interval, Notice that it becomes even steeper. So rate of change here is decreasing. For the next interval, we have concave up. So notice from here to here, I have a negative rate of change. We'll look at the next interval. Now from three to four, that rate of change is still negative, but it's not as negative as from two to three. So here concave um, up because my rate of change is increasing. Still negative, still negative. And then if we go from four to five, now I have a positive rate of change. And from five to six, if I connect these two, that's even steeper. So that rate of change is increasing, that's concave up. Now this point where we changed right here, this is our point of inflection. This is our point of inflection right here. All right. Let's go ahead and look at this example. Here is example two. And again, I'm going to go ahead and label where this graph is concave down. So right away, this graph here is concave down, probably I'll say up until four there, concave down, and then also concave down from right there, eight to 10. Okay, so this is concave down, concave down, okay, and if you want, you can go ahead and make a list over here, so let's say this, so concave down from, uh, that would be zero to four, union eight to 10, okay. And then our graph is concave up, concave up on this other section where it is opening upwards. That's concave up, okay? And that would be from four to eight, okay? Where this changes, where we change from concave up to concave down, that is known as an inflection point. So we have points of inflection at uh, four and eight. So points of inflection at x equals 4 and 8, okay? All right, let's go ahead and uh, answer some questions. They say, use the graph to answer these questions. Over the interval negative 1 to 2, the rate of change is, is it positive? Is it negative? Is it increasing or is it decreasing? So negative one to two. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and identify. So from negative one to two, from negative one to two, uh, the rate of change. Well, I know on that section that the rate of change is concave down. So that means that concave down, okay. So that means that our rate of change is decreasing. This is going to be D. The rate of change will be decreasing. Okay. Um, my note, my rate of change for negative one to zero, that's pretty steep and it's positive. From zero to one, it's positive, but it's not as steep. And then one to two, it's, now it's actually negative. And what's consistent over that, that change, and if I go ahead and, and kind of highlight that this here, you can see. Here is our rate of change. I'm just drawing straight lines here. You notice that those rate of change are getting smaller and smaller as we go, okay? So the answer is D. How about over the interval three to six? The rate of change is, okay, well, I'm gonna go ahead and identify here is three, and then here is six. Well, that graph is concave up, 
So on that section, it's concave up. Which, if we go ahead and look at the rate of change, so from 3 to 4, that's negative. From 4 to 5, that's negative, but it's less negative. And then now from 5 to 6, if I was to connect these, now it's positive. So it's, it's actually increasing. Again, tying these ideas, concave down means that your rate of change is decreasing. It's getting smaller and smaller and smaller, smaller slopes. And increasing means that it, the rate of change is, sorry, concave up means that your rate of change is increasing. Okay, um, for this next example, we're going to go ahead and sketch a graph of a function that has these given characteristics. So we're told um, a value of x, so from 0 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 5, 5 to 6, and then they want us to draw the rate of change of of f on the interval. Here it's positive and increasing, 2 to 3, um, negative and increasing. Next one, positive and decreasing, and then negative and decreasing. So let's go ahead and sketch this. So from 0 to 2, I want a positive and increasing. So if my rate of change is positive, that's going to be sloping, it's going to be going upwards. The function is going to be increasing. And then if the rate of change is increasing, how it grows is going to get faster and faster and faster. So something like, like this, almost like an exponential function. Okay. For the next one, I want the rate of change to be negative, but to be increasing. Okay. So if it's negative, this function is going to be going down, um, but it is going to be increasing. The rate of change is going to be increasing. Well, that's going to look something, so for 2 to 3, something like this. Now, I know you're saying, how is that increasing? Well, the, the rate of change, the slope, is negative, but it's getting less and less negative. Imagine if you slice this into smaller pieces, you could see um, that my rate of change is getting less and less negative. So that's technically an increasing rate of change. Both of these, notice, both of these rates of change where they're increasing, my graph is concave up. No, notice that these, gra these graphs are sloping upwards. Okay, um, next one's positive and decreasing on three to five. I want a graph that's positive uh, but decreasing. So from three to five, okay, positive. So it's going to be going up. And then decreasing, we'll draw something like that. I do have a positive slope, but I'm getting less and less positive as I, as I go. My intervals are getting less and less steep. Okay? And then lastly, uh, negative and decreasing. Negative and decreasing. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and kind of build off this and continue. Something like that like this. So now it's negative and my slope and slopes are getting more and more negative or more and more steep in the negative direction. Okay. Notice a decreasing rate of change produces a concave down graph. All right. Okay. So uh, the table shows the characteristics of the rates of change for the function uh, f on different intervals. This is what we just looked at. Match each interval in the table with the description of f. So a, f is increasing and concave down on the interval where. So where is it increasing and concave down? Well, we already said um, it's concave down for, for these last two. We just want our graph to be increasing, okay, and that's going to be on three to five. Okay, and it's much easier to, to see. I'll, I'll tie this to my colors that I used up here. So this was that green portion of the graph. Part B, F is increasing and concave up on the interval. Well, that's our first section here, increasing, concave up. So that is 0 to 2. Okay, C, F is decreasing and concave down. Decreasing and concave down. Well, that was our last portion where we're decreasing and concave down. 
Okay, so that's going to be five to six. And then lastly, F is decreasing and concave up on which interval. So I am decreasing and concave up here in this blue section from two to three. Okay. And that's all we got. So hopefully in this lesson, you were able to uh, demonstrate an understanding of concavity that you can identify on a curve where it's concave up and concave down, and then also tie this into rate of change. It's concave up if rate of change is increasing, okay? The slopes are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And then it's also concave down if those slopes are getting more and more negative. Go ahead, I'll catch you in the next video. See ya.